Good morning. Welcome to Welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church on this Sunday, September 13th. So glad you could be with us for uh, morning worship this morning. Uh, I'd like to say hello to everybody who's watching on our Facebook stream as well. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm stuck in morning prayer. <laughs> blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Let us say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the lessons. Our first reading for today is from the book of Romans, chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or your sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly Psalm 103 at the asterisk. It can be found in... Uh, page four of your bulletin. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. 
He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And, as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison 
until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to the Lord all that they had that all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, "You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you?" And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. During these times of pandemic, we've all been under a great deal of stress. I don't think I'm saying anything new to anybody here this morning. And that stress, that fear and anxiety about a whole number of situations where it seems like we don't have much control, often leads to strong emotions within ourselves. Social distancing and isolation with the occasional trip out while having to take the necessary precautions, like wearing a mask, isn't what we're used to. You know, we like to see one another's faces. We like to get together, whether at church or at a restaurant or simply going to one another's homes. We like to see other people. And so right now, we miss that. We've had to be at home with just our family members. And even for strong relationships, quarantine has been a strain. Lord knows at my house there has been some tension from time to time. You know, that's just bound to happen during times of stress. Living together, being together, every hour of the day, every single day with no end in sight is difficult. It leads to stress. And I think when we're under a great deal of stress, one of the first things that just goes right out the window is grace. That ability to just let the little things go. The things that would normally not bother us at all suddenly become a big deal. That forgiveness that we know we need to offer doesn't seem to come quite as easily now. You never replace the empty toilet paper roll. Suddenly that's a huge fight. I'm always the one stuck having to do the dishes. Well, I guess I'm walking the dog again. And those, those are just the little grievances, right? To say nothing of the major stresses some of us are facing right now lost jobs and wages, dealing with distance learning, seeing more and more division happen all around us. Forgiveness and grace can be really difficult to offer right now, and it can be even harder to receive during these difficult times. And for me, that's really sad. One theologian writes that forgiveness is central to our life together in this world. Without forgiveness, without offering one another grace, how can we possibly stay in relationship with one another? Forgiveness is life, he concludes. Forgiveness is life. And that's why Jesus speaks about it so frequently. You know, for these past two Sundays, we've heard a great deal about living together in community, about the conflict that naturally arises when living in said community, and then our need to forgive one another when we live in community. Last week, we heard Jesus talk all about what to do if someone sins against you. Point it out to them in private. They still can't acknowledge their wrongdoing, well, then take a few people along to witness the conversation. If they still won't listen, then take it to the wider body. 
If they still refuse to listen, even in front of the wider community, then they should be seen as a Gentile and a tax collector. So the offender has three opportunities to admit their wrongdoing and repent. But if they still can't manage to see where they've done wrong after those three chances, well then, maybe they are getting what they deserve by being excluded from the community. But remember, forgiveness is life. And that's why Jesus busts Peter's question about how many times he should forgive wide open. Maybe Peter thought he was being especially generous by offering forgiveness seven times. And who wants to forgive someone who's wronged them seven times? Once, sure. Twice, yeah. Seven times? That's going a little above and beyond, Peter. Maybe you're on to something here, though. You know, at least according to rabbinic traditions of the day, you only have to require, you're only required to seek forgiveness three times, and as we all know, Seven is three times two plus one. No, not seven times, Peter. More like 77 times. And that number 77 really isn't the point. Jesus is using exaggeration to get his point across here. Christ doesn't want Peter or us to count seven. 5, 76, 77. Okay, I've hit 78. I'm done forgiving. Out of the forgiveness game. No, Jesus is telling us to forgive way more than we can imagine, way more than we can count or ever keep track of. His point is that there's to be no limit on forgiveness. That the spirit of forgiveness should be so ingrained in who we are that we lose count of how many times we're required to forgive our neighbor. Or better yet, we're not bothering to keep count in the first place. But we're really good at keeping track of things, aren't we? We have this way of keeping track of the number of times we've been wrong. It's almost as if we like holding those grudges. You do this. Well, you do that. You never do this. You always do that. On and on and on. Little check marks against people in our books that we carry around in our back pocket. That resentment builds distance. And resentment and distance together allows us to build up these walls around ourselves. And it's really scary how quickly those walls go up. How quickly they cut us off from everybody and everything. We have to be able to forgive. Because again, forgiveness is, lo- forgiveness is life. And we know this. Again, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know from the pulpit this morning. We know we need to forgive one another. The problem is, it's so gosh darn hard to do. That's why Jesus talks about it so often. That's why he tells the parable he does in our gospel reading for this morning. He tells of a king who goes about settling accounts with his servants, and one of them owes him 10,000 talents. It's an incredibly enormous amount of money. A talent is a is approximately 20 years' worth of wages. So figure this servant's yearly wages was around $15,000. If that's the case, then the debt the servant owes the king would be about $3 billion. $3 billion. Now clearly, the king has already shown quite a bit of grace in just lending the servant that amount of money to begin with. I don't have $3 billion lying around to lend out to somebody. And on top of that, the king forgives the debt. If I don't have $3 billion lying about it, I certainly don't have $3 billion to just give away. But then the servant, whose debt was just forgiven, goes and he attacks another man who owes him far less money than he himself owed. He has him thrown in jail for being unable to pay his debt. 
the injustice of it all. You'd think that he'd be willing to show just a little bit of mercy and grace himself. But as we know, that's not the case. He does the exact opposite of what the king did for him. And it's real easy for us to get stuck right here in Jesus' parable. It isn't fair. We as a people, we value fairness. How can the one forgiven so, so much refuse to forgive another? He got what he deserved. Yet every one of us has probably struggled at one point or another to offer forgiveness ourselves. We forget that there have been times when we've been offered forgiveness or when we have been loved or received grace far more than we thought we deserved and then in turn we fail to pass that along. So is this parable a warning from Jesus? You better forgive or else you're going to end up like that servant. Or is it an accurate description of just how hard forgiveness can truly be? Because it is hard work. It's very hard work. Forgiveness isn't easy. But it's also the work of the kingdom of God. Forgiveness is what breaks down those walls that we build up around ourselves. It's what transforms our lives. It makes us beacons of light and hope. By offering forgiveness, that's the good news made manifest in our lives. That doesn't make it easy. Lord knows it isn't easy. It's so much easier to hold on to that grudge. To strike back in anger when we've been wronged. But hanging on to those sins committed against us or counting the number of times we've been wrong, that distorts our relationship with others, which in turn distorts our relationship with ourselves, which in turn distorts our relationship with God. This parable, the parable of the unforgiving servant, reminds us that forgiveness is what God expects from us. And I think in that sense, forgiveness is really a lot like love. Just as we're obligated to love the other, we're obligated to forgive the other in our life of faith. Now in just a few moments, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Think about those words as we forgive those who trespass against us. May we take those words into our hearts because only then do I think we begin to understand what forgiveness is really all about. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel as you are able for the prayers of the people. Rejoice in the waters of life those who honor God in all things, and raise your voices in prayer, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for this holy day where we gather as a household of faith to hear the word of God with open minds and grateful hearts, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the arms of forgiveness that embrace us in the midst of our sin, leading us to repentance, and filling us with the waters of mercy through which we will forgive others. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For honesty in government and integrity in our dealings with one another, that trust may be restored between people and throughout the institutions of our society. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may commit ourselves to a life of simplicity so that we may provide for the needs of the poor and hungry, as Jesus provided nourishment and hope to his followers. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may share our spiritual doubts with one another, convinced that in our mutual self-disclosure, we will be strengthened in faith and grow in the conviction that God's love can forgive all things and transform all life. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for those who are teachers and catechists in our church, that they may be given the blessing of knowledge and wisdom as they bear the Christian message to those in their charge. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may be redeemed from the grave and wear the crown of eternal life. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Miriam sang to the Lord for all the glorious gifts her people had received, and so we join with her in continuing our prayers. For parish members who are ill, infirm, or in need, including Judy Shackleton, Wayne Lockard and the Lockard family, Bill and Carolyn, David Kerpark, Evelyn Ellis, Leo Landry, Rob, Ben, Eleanor, Samuel, Matthew, Phil Hoagie, Joan Langenfeld, Eloise Hendrickson, Pete Coakley, Mary and Scott Vining, Loretta March, Leonard Tabor, May, Alexandra, Jenny, Rick Davis, Ann Brown, Kelly Weaver, Kelsey Boyd, Mel Sappington, Pat Cooper, Fran Sullivan, Mark, Alan, Jordan, Noah, and those we name with our lips or in our hearts. For those who have been deployed and put in harm's way to defend our country. For all those who work for the safety of our communities and the security of our country. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember those in the fellowship of the faith, Christ Church, Port Republic, Middleham, and St. Peter's, Lusby, and the Church of St. Andrew the Fisherman, Mayo. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for our companion diocese of Puerto Rico and for the Anglican Church of South America. Jesus, you are our way, our truth, and our life. Guide us in our journey through the coming week, that we may know God's desire for us and gain strength and courage to live as beloved children of God. 
as the gift of each new day unfolds, open our hearts and minds to you, that we may see you clearly and follow where you lead. To you, risen Savior, we offer praise, now and always. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share with one another a sign of Christ's peace, socially distance, of course. And Christ's peace be with all of you who are watching live on our live stream. Please be seated for just a few brief announcements. First off, it's great to be back. I've been away for the past couple weeks. It's good to be back with you all. Um, thank you all for being here this morning. Um, just as a reminder, we do have our evening, uh, Sunday evening service this evening at 6.30 um, down at our outdoor altar. You are welcome to come uh, to two services on a Sunday. That's perfectly legal and fine. Um, if you do want to join us this evening, please sign up on the Sign Up Genius. At, uh, and you might want to do so quick because spaces are filling up very quickly. Uh, the Bible study will begin uh, very soon. I need to put together the final touches on it, but I will put out an email for that. Uh, the Bible study will be on studying the covenants of, that God has with the people of God. So be on the lookout for that email coming at some point next week. Uh, flowers are available if you'd like to donate flowers for our altar. Uh, we had been um, not having flowers in our, in our sanctuary uh, for much of the summer just because we wanted to keep people out of the, the sanctuary as much as we could. But now that we're kind of in a groove, we're getting used to wearing the face mask and being together with one another socially distant, we can start offering flowers once again. So if you'd like to offer flowers, uh, please contact the Altar Guild or us in the office and we will pass that message along. Uh, and when you make out your check, please make it out to St. Stephen's with flowers in the memo line. Um, it's a great way to honor somebody or remember a special occasion. So that is back up and running now. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, which is found on page 361, if you're following along in the Book of Common Prayer. 
It begins on page 9 in your bulletin if you're here at church. And you can also find it in the bulletin and the link in the description of the video that we are live streaming. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of men. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. 
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Once again this Sunday, we'll start with this side of the sanctuary. Please receive your, uh, your wafer from the table by coming through by the main altar and then exit and go back by the window. A prayer for spiritual communion for those who cannot be with us in person this morning. In union, O oh Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Christ, 
And let me never be separated from you. And I live in you, and you in me, in this life, and in the life to come. Amen. And let us say our post-communion prayer together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>